if you viewers out there are tuning in, this is our weekly uh, Blood Bowl League. We've got the Lords of the Bell going up against the Warped. I uh, forgive me, Ark Lloyd, I forgot the name of your team, even though I've done all of the work for putting them up on screen here. The Warped Stoners, I apologize, in our penultimate uh, matchup of the Losers League. The semifinals, if you will, in the actual parlance. So, the loser of today's match will be eliminated from the bracket. Whereas the uh, winner of today's match will go on to fight the loser of the semifinals of the winner's bracket. Which is both myself and my esteemed colleague who's missing from the window next to me, Griffin. So the winner of today's match has the has the esteemed pleasure of going up against Griffin's Greats or the First Horseman, depending. But either way, both of these teams have had the chance to earn some experience in some previous matches. Ah, oh, there we go. Hey, I'm back for the lunch stream. You're doing the intro, aren't you? Uh, I've actually already started. I literally started the moment you left because, as you <laughs> mentioned, I have no sense. idea where we are now. Uh, just explaining to any potential viewers that these are the semi-finalists of the loser's bracket with the winner of today's match going on to face either you or me, the uh, loser of the That's right. semi-final of the winner's bracket. It'll be the streamer match of the century, but until then, we've got to find out who our opponent is going to be. Right. Once again. Uh, and you may or may not have mentioned it, but this is uh, a rat-focused game, I think, today. So this is going to involve a lot of... Uh, Trixie movement. So we'll see who comes out on top. Well, it's a chaos team that has a number of rat players versus a rat focused team. Right, right. The mixed team has the advantage of being able to maybe brawl their way out of the situation, but both teams are going to be trying to get that ball, get completely around the melee, and just completely ignore it. Uh, yeah, yeah, because the Chaos team does have a number of uh, goblins and Chaos warriors up on its lineup. I think leaning heavily into the uh, Gutter Runners uh, Skavens on its side, as opposed to the Warped Stoners, which are uh, heavy uh, Skaven totality. Uh, unfortunately, though, as I right. noticed in the last couple of times uh, Arkle has been running his team, uh, no heavy Skaven. I can't remember what it's called, but he doesn't have one. It might be Storm Vermin, I think. And there might be a mutant as well in there. Well, he doesn't have a Storm Vermin. He has no heavy hitter on the front line of his team. Right. No blockers or anything. However, he does have the uh, rat with a cannon strapped to his arm. So he can actually do throwing plays, which is uh, more than uh, Oni's team can do. Sure, sure. Oni's team is more built for a straight ahead. Well, not even that, actually. I would say it's built for a straight ahead. He's built on. for just running it. Uh, yeah, because that's what he uses. That's where all of his goals has come from. His gutter runners running it around the edge of the field. But we have two teams that have focused all their early plays on making that edge of the field runs. We stole a fortress. And, yeah, here we are back at We Stole a Fortress Stadium, Oni's home turf. And if you just take a look at the Lords of the Bell right here, we see those wonderful Skaven, our Assassins, our Beastmen, and of course, uh, always reprising roles, the Goblins who uh, really can't make it through a game, honestly. I think this is actually going to be the uh, first time since the very first match that the Assassins is going to be back on the field. I think they got knocked out for one game, and this is their reprisal play. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right, actually. He got knocked out. Uh, very unfortunate. I, I caused it. <laughs> And here we see the Warp Stoners, uh, a lot of basic rats, our gutter runners, and of course our uh, Skaven Thrower. Coin is being flipped, and we're going to see who goes first. Oh, take a look at that. The Lords have won the toss, and they are choosing to, of course, uh, take the kickoff. Yes, they've uh, decided to place all their units in defensive mode. Hopefully Yugi isn't cheating this game. Face down attack position. <laughs> uh, once again, Oni is doing that weird thing where he puts one unit on one side and then staggers one backwards one line. 
I believe that's specifically to keep him from being engaged early with those units. With the assassin, it makes a lot of sense because you don't want someone to just immediately brawl with the assassin. They'd have to blitz them in order to do so. My apologies, I'm talking center field halfway back on his line. And I'm not talking about oh. why he has them back there. I'm saying that they're... Sorry, this is just a me thing. They're not in a line. <laughs> One oh, is... Oh, right, right. They're not... They don't look pretty, which I also understand. <laughs> One is five lines back, and the other one across from it is six lines back, and it doesn't make any sense. Here we go. Doing the kickoff. And it's blitz time. Let's see what he does. Well, the bell get a free bonus turn, but only for people not on the front line, which is apparently what he built it for. And given the kick location, Ooh. depending on bounce, he could possibly just run a runner right in there. I almost bet that was intentional then, yeah. Ooh, and the first brawl of the game, and there's one rat to the ground. And a piece of chicken in my mouth. Welcome to lunch stream, brought to you by Sonic. Oh, really? Because I went with chicken, but I went with a uh, Hardee's menu. <laughs> Hardee's. However, I will not be eating it on stream. I will be letting it get cold for your satisfaction, the viewer. I demand hot food. It's right here. I can't do anything else. Also, I've There's already... no better entertainment when you have your Sonic meal and your Sonic uh, drink to be watching Blood Bowl here with us. Brought to you by Hardee's Honey Mustard. <laughs> and already in reroll territory. Yeah, he went for a double uh, dodge for some reason. Well, actually, no, he went against the double dodge to go around and failed that. Right, he tried to get that ball, uh, which, honestly, fair move, smart thing to try... And he didn't have to risk very much. He still has a very solid front line here, and the ball isn't even in Ark's hand yet. Now, the smart play would have been to have blitzed the uh, guy who was blocking the way in order to then get another guy around him. Right, but it would have been rat-on-rat -rat warfare at that point. Yes, but he would have been uh, positioned to, I don't know, score a goal. Ark, of course, uh, drops the ball, loses the turn, and now it's right back to Oni, and now he's going to build up an even better position. I suppose, in fairness, it was a bonus turn that he only got for the kickoff, so in the end, the loss was barely anything. Well, that wouldn't have played well for either of them. Again, the real benefit Oni's team has here, uh, being a, a mixed team, is the fact that he has a number of of Chaos Warriors and specialized units that the uh, Skaven team does not have. And once again, the mm -hmm. fact that he does not have that heavy Skaven unit uh, there to counter these Chaos Warriors is a real folly in uh, team design. Now, he did trip. He didn't already move the unit that tripped uh, and tried to pick up the ball again yet, did he? No, he got knocked out and he's off the field. So yeah, he can't even try that. Unfortunate. Well, yeah, but he has uh, at least two really uh, gutter runners that have uh, formed the entire basis of his XP uh, grind, his entire uh, bracket. Oh, yeah. He can still try. There's still plenty of other options, just not that one. Oh, and that's maybe a few too many dodges, but I can understand when to try to tie this up and make things complicated. Not going through that many uh, zones. Well, I don't know. It is escaping. I just don't see any reason why you would have done that when you still had units available to take their turns. At least put them uh, in a uh, touchdown, not touchdown, a uh, a zone. Right. I'm guessing this is still a matter of just keeping his defensive line, making sure nothing terrible happens. And there we go, a three-on-one rat fight. The worst thing that could have possibly happened, but he's just dodging out of the way. Well, the thing to remember is our point of view right now is that of Oni Wolf, the more experienced player in the entire league. So every mm -hmm. time we see him doing something that just doesn't seem to make sense to us, we have to pick it apart because he would pick us apart. So. <laughs> <laughs> now he's not he's not that experienced, but uh, he he does have more ideas about strategy. I would assume. Uh, uh, he that forms said, his own leagues on the side, so I think... Ah, there you go. Okay, so now he has more experience, because I'm playing one game every three weeks here. Right. 
So yeah, it makes it all very much more confusing when he does things that he himself would mock if he saw one of us doing it. Right, and if we take a look at that center pitch right there, the main fight is basically already over. Uh, and we're seeing if Arcloid... Arcloid's trying to wrap around and make sure that he has uh, the space to work with, I think. Well, he's putting that... units into zones, which will affect their ability to both move, dodge, or, if the fight comes to them, Ooh. affect the oh. uh, dice rolls, which makes more well, the sense. Well, tries to escape, and he re-rolls. Let's see if he actually gets out of here. And he does. He's in. Dangerously on the edge. Only a turn two, though, and you've already used your only reroll. Oh, yeah. Resources are going fast as well as the turns. I'm waiting for another turn over here when they pick up the ball and just nobody picks it up for six rounds in a row. That's what I'm here for. Round two. There's the assassin, which we haven't seen in a while. Remain wildly unsuccessful at the only job they have. It'll be embarrassing to get knocked down by a goblin. Again, the Indeed. weakest of all of the creators in the league. Well, second weakest. Well, those goblins came in handy. He put them in the backfield. Waited for someone to come up, and then he took the shot. Good job. Yeah, because every other goblin on his team has been killed so far. Maybe this one will survive. He's special, probably. Yeah, the one ironically named a refund. And Arkloid's insistence on investing in low-cost Skaven is not paying off by the fact that every Skaven that he has is getting knocked out. Oh dear. The worst case scenario here for Arkloid would definitely be his main team just slowly getting knocked out throughout the course of this, maybe even injured. And by the second half, he just has no options, which uh, has happened to people before. <laughs> Specifically Oni. So, we'll have to see if Oni ends up going for that strategy, too. Arkloid with the ball. And now not with the ball. Now here comes the fun time. Where's it going to bounce? And it goes off the field. Back onto the field. And it's way out of position. This is hilarious. There's the distinct possibility the next time Oni gets a turn, he could actually pull something out there, but Arkloid's going to get the first chance to just grab that and move it all the way around literally every problem here. I feel like uh, Oni has made the most misplays so far that have just been working well in his favor. Like, Arkloid really hasn't done anything wrong as of yet, but the ball is still moving closer and closer to a field goal. Well, this is Blood Bowl. You come for the strategy, and then you stay for the comedic timing. And apparently, you try to knock a unit out, but unfortunately, you have no rerolls, and the other guy has block. Attack her down. And he lost another unit. This is about to get very funny. I mean, we all understand what he was going for. He wanted to knock the unit outside the field so that the fans would possibly kill him. And given what the unit was, it would have been It was very... the danger of not having a reroll anymore. It was also a very important unit in uh, Oni's arsenal. So the loss would have been great, almost to say it was worth the while to have tried. Now, this is a complicated bit of maneuvering here. Uh, but there is one unit that Oni could try to throw out here if he just pushes this one away. There you go. All of Arkloid Skaven pushed to the edge of the field. And there is one beast man who can run away, try to grab that ball, and just finish this off. Maybe not this turn, but definitely next turn. Right. The possibility also exists that you can knock two of Arkloid's guys out into the field to get decimated by fans, which is, I think, what you're attempting now. Given that you KO'd a guy, and then the other guy behind the guy you KO'd then got fanned, who is now also KO'd. So if he takes his uh, yeah, little nice two, little chain. lefty's cousin, he can lock that guy out of the field. Mm -hmm. 
and just ignore the ball for a turn, decimating uh, Arkeloid's team to ensure that for the rest of the game, he has to worry about nothing. We're very much getting to that point as it is. So instead of going for the ball, he's just going for the beatdown, which, fair enough, honestly. Oh, maybe he could send the goblin out there. Yeah, Lefty's cousin can still knock that other guy off the field, which might cause another injury. Cheddar getting knocked down, I believe. Though I don't know why you would stay there on the edge of the field. That's just risk. I guess I guess because Arclay's team has nothing left to counter it with. Uh, yeah, that's fair, of course. Ooh, and this guy could probably get pushed out. I don't know. Sideways tends to not happen that way. Although he has a knocked out guy in front of him, so I don't know. Oh, there he is. Out of the field. All right. Playing dirty. It it took a couple turns to set up, but here it is. The team is falling. That guy didn't get knocked out, though. Not even injured, so fans are not doing their job. Uh, but they are off the field for right now. Yeah, I guess the thing here is you don't want the goblins to pick up the ball because <laughs> you don't want to level up a goblin. Going for the foul as well. No result there, unfortunate. <laughs> Lefty's cousin, one of the two big scorers on Oni's team. Can he pick up the ball? He sure can. Can he get there? No. Nor is it worth risking. One more turn, and there aren't very many options here for Ark. Well, his entire team is on the ground. Well, except for that one. Gouda, way back here in the back. Uh, also proving Storm Vermin is not the name of the unit we're talking about. <laughs> because Gouda was a Storm Vermin. I'm talking about the giant one. The massive... Rat Ogre. That's what it was. So funnily enough, it might be better for Ark to keep that player on the edge of the field just down so he doesn't get popped out of the field. Oh, of course. You don't pick up a guy who's surrounded by the enemy <laughs> on the edge of the field unless you want him to die or you're trying to trick the other team into wasting a turn. That's a long-term risk for a short-term gain. I mean, at this point, just leave the entire team down Hope he scores, and then somebody wakes back up. But no, that's the one he uses the blitz with. And he goes for it, and he goes down. Doesn't pay off. I mean, even, even then, leaving your team down in this game doesn't give you any advantage, because Oni is the fouling type. There were three rats there that were adjacent to a goblin, and any one of them could probably have easily walked away from that goblin and helped support that. But that would have also been a risk, and there's just no good answer. Oh, and we have a stun. Oni is just performing the tactic that was used against him that put him into the loser's bracket at the very start of this game. If Arkloid has no units on the field, then he has nothing that can stop him from getting near infinite touchdowns this entire game lefty's cousin and dart of the underground i believe is the other one could just level up immensely it really caused you a headache in your next game griff your game after next i should say oh yeah if i had to face oni absolutely it's going to be a knockout brawl oh you will be facing oni Oh, you are you are not optimistic about Arkloy's chances to come back from one single touchdown so far. No, it hasn't even been one touchdown so far. Hasn't even been, but it will be. It's about to be, and there it is. No, I'm just forecasting your inability to defeat me. Oh, oh, I see, I see. <laughs> Slightly different problem there. I kind of uh, gave uh, saw it as a given that Arkloy, with like five teammates left, wasn't going to win. Although, to be oh, fair... no, we're back up to six. No, that was uh, yellow, is our blade. Still back up to six. <laughs> yeah, I guess he does have a lot of backup uh, team members. And I guess, to be fair, if you're at, maybe that's just what you needed. Oh, yeah, there's still three more on the bench. He could actually take some hits. He's... Arkloid is still in this. The only question is, can he score? One more round like he already had, and he'll have no more on the bench. 
It will not be it will not look good, that's for sure. There's the kickoff cheering fans, an extra point, I believe. An extra for re roll for the team that already has th had two re rolls left and now has three. So they have three to zero. Five more turns to go. Four more, really. And Arkloy choosing to spread out to the side where the ball dropped. Going for a blitz of all things. I mean, at least he scene... had block. Yeah. Now, if he just stays, oh, hmm, that might be dangerous. We'll have to see how this all pans out, honestly. But I guess being not adjacent to the Beast Man is also a good strategy. Well, the thing is, is he's got a number of mediocre units, like low strength, uh, mm, I guess lower armor, not low armor, but lower armor, which means that even just trying to grab the ball and caging up isn't a very effective uh, strategy against a chaos right. team. He said it would appear for a for a uh, throwing play. So if he moves his uh, thrower up to the ball, grabs it, then he can send a gutter runner up, and next turn almost certainly score if that gutter runner does not go down and he doesn't lose the ball. But no, he chooses to pass immediately just to try getting it downfield as quickly as possible. He only has to get past the one goblin, and if he can do that, he might be home free because there's only going to be two goblins, the gutter runner, and maybe that beast man. The goblins uh, only maybe not uh, the beast man. The goblins only saving grace is their movement ability, so that they would be able to catch up to this guy, I believe. 50, 50, 80. Ah, and he did it. And he's going all the way. He just gets the goal. There's very little that can be done now except for a goblin blitz. And I don't have faith in that. I'm gonna say that's probably Dart of the Underground right there on the right hand side, plus the goblin there, and I think both of them can reach this guy. So they can absolutely reach him, but can they actually get him? Uh, well, I think it's be an even fight, uh, made uneven by the fact that you put a goblin right next to him. So, yeah, I think uh, I think it's very possible they they just knock out whoever the hell uh, Arkway sent to pick up the ball, and is now gonna face the consequences because it's unlikely that Arkway can knock out the people who would then be sent back to uh, stop this touchdown from happening. And a beast man goes down. This is actually suddenly very dire on this turn. Now, again, I unless Oni really messes this up, that guy's going to be surrounded. Ooh. It's going to be three. Oh, gosh, he does mess he has three up immediately. <laughs> he has three rerolls. He better use it. It's only a going forward. Five out of six chances. I don't know why you would start with a going forward, though. Oh, he's going to try to actually block him in a little bit. It won't you, really stop him. You just need the overlapping touchdown zones for when you send in that last guy in for a blitz. That's all that really matters. That's the guy you got to save for the... That's a very little bit of an awkward path. I guess he wants to try pushing him into the goblins if it doesn't work. Rather than away from him. Oh, which is smart. Dirty, doesn't he? That was the best move he could have oh. made, because he needs to knock the guy down. Stunty <sighs> would have meant he would have avoided the, uh, the but other. But this is perfect. Take a look at this. He can get up, he can walk away from the two goblins, pick it up, and go do the touchdown all in one action. Oh, that's easy. All he has to do is actually succeed it. So there we go. That's half of it, and it's two five out of six chances and nothing after that. And there you go, there's the score. Even when he went down, he still got it. Well, yeah, with three dice, he uh, only just did not get lucky with that uh, pile up. Here we go, the first uh, the first round did not look great for anyone. Arkloid was on the back foot, and he managed to put it back to even, and now we got a real game going forward. We only got three more turns left this half, so let's see if he can actually get anything done with that. Right, but that and that itself before was a two-turn touchdown, so we know it's possible that we could end this half with an uneven score. As we set up our oh, defense. Oh, absolutely. Setup going down. 
plenty of players still left on the field. Gutter Runner is going up front for Oni at the moment, but he might change that up, honestly. Assassin in the back, I don't think that's where he's going to want him. But Could we'll be. have to see. I mean, the Assassin doesn't really get any uh, kills but unless there's not in a touchdown zone. I mean, a uh, tackle zone. So you really want him out where there's only going to be one person uh, facing off against him. It's usually why he's one line behind everybody on the front, typically. Oh, that's right. The assassin is also dealing with an uh, injury. I completely forgot about that. Which explains why he's not doing so hot in his uh, assassination attempts. Do you happen to know which injury he has right now? I do not, but if you uh, pay careful attention, when Oni scrolls over him, you'll see the red and white uh, plus symbol on him, which indicates that he is suffering from an injury of some degree. A right, lasting so... injury at that. Ah, lasting one. So it's not likely to go away, then. Got it. Uh, no, that's why they use the word lasting. <laughs> Here we go. Going for a very heavy center defense. There are definitely gaps in the defense for someone to weasel through, but not very much. Here we go. Cannon goes off. High kick. Uh, which I believe means that it will actually drop at the... No, it means someone can actually go ahead and move in right now. Yeah, anybody not in a tackle zone can move. Oh, and it did not get uh, caught. Unfortunate, but it's still there. It's still adjacent to someone. Still in his control. Yeah, fortunately, it doesn't count as part of the turn, which means that you can still have your normal turn actions to, you know, even go over there and pick up the ball. And he's already using that center field to his advantage, pushing it out, fighting the very thin rat defense there. Whereas Arkell seems to have a spread out defense now, which is probably what he needs. As you saw there, also the plus sign indicating that lasting injury, despite us not remembering what it was. Normal sports reporters probably do research. I can't wait till we upgrade to the point where we can do squiggly lines on the uh, on the game as it's happening. I believe you could actually do that in OBS right now. I think all you would need to do is have a layer uh, specifically to watch paint. You chroma key out white, and then you use any other color, and then you can I quote paint on the screen. Do that, but. You but be it's constantly it. moving. It's not really helpful. It's, well, not even that. Well, it'd be very awkward. It's arguable that it's helpful to begin with, <laughs> but but it'd be funny. But you wouldn't be able to see it. And what was what they need to do now was so they take this guy over here and they move over there, and you'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't see what you're that, doing. That's what improv comedy is for. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not improv comedy. A guy who's dead, right? <laughs> the guy who just died within the last year. Hi, John Madden here, back from the grave for a game of football. I'm sorry, were you doing John Madden or Billy Mays? Um, Another dead guy, by the way. <laughs> I was always assuming John Madden. He also had, like, a little draw board for exactly this occasion. Yeah, but, uh, hi, I'm Billy Mays, and you would... Hi, I'm John Madden. In fairness, I don't think John Madden introduced himself before every whiteboard whatever it's called. Uh, good question. Don't know. Let's see what's happened actually on the field. <laughs> uh, it looks like they're trying to cage up, which uh, they do not have the appropriate unit balance for, but at the same time, it's a real Vincent weird... versus Gaven, they're all spread out, and we got a spread defense. Ark is going to be forced to break the cage. It's a very weird scenario where we have goblins and Skaven being forced to uh, cage up against the team. The only team this is notably <laughs> work against is either A, the Skaven team, which you're going against, or if you have somehow knocked out the Trents on a halfling team. Because you're using some of the weakest units in the game to form a cage. And it just how happens to be you're going up against a team entirely built with weaker units somehow. I gotta say, I was halfway tempted to make a halfling team this time around. Just... As a joke. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, I always want to do the uh, the Ogre Goblin team, 
just to have mm-hmm. as many ogres as possible on the field. <laughs> but then you just get left with loner syndrome, where nobody's doing any actions because you can't get them to pass that d6 roll. Everyone just stays stationary and goes, nah, not all today. <laughs> and then, yeah, the enemy just has to walk around you. Here you go. What is your plan here? You're going to try to move and dodge that character arc, but to what end? Where is he going? Going all the way behind the cage? For some reason. For some unexplicable reason. He he must be thinking of trying to get some assistance here, but that's a terrible position to be. That's three people adjacent. I don't think it assists anyone. Oh, that guy's gonna get assassinated. I mean, it also doesn't stop the ball holder from progressing, even from within the cage. The unit in front of him moves, he moves, and he's not in any tackle zones himself. Huh. I mean, your guy has block. It's a good move for you. Well, the Bell Lord's been KO'd from the Lords of the Bell team. So, that's got to be a gate to morale. An astounding play right there. Who could have ever guessed that could have happened? Again, for me, it's now, just a name hit because it's the Lords of the Bell and the Bell Lord's been knocked down. It has to be the mascot of the team, right? Now, I know I've mentioned this before, but I think the funniest thing to happen here would almost certainly be for Arkeloid to just stall out the game for three turns, move all of his Skaven Provolone back is dead, by, by one the way. unit. Not to interrupt Pro- you. <laughs> <laughs> but the assassin just killed Provolone, which I believe I said during the last turn, that guy's dead due to the assassin. I think that's his first confirmed kill. Put like a crosshair and a skull up on the screen here. It might you actually... You won't edit it. Is, it. is it possibly the first death of the uh, the game? No, plenty of goblins died. God, I'm almost... But this that is doesn't... the first time the assassin got a kill. I want to say that almost doesn't even count, because they're goblins. <laughs> Uh, they're they're like half a person each. Uh, I've killed like four of them. I mean, they're like halflings. They're, <laughs> they just... but they still die. <laughs> we needed we needed names on our roster, or they wouldn't let us form a team. So we went to the local playpen. <laughs> we took some children out of preschool. I mean, basically. We decided the new infant ward was the best place to look for new players. Halflings and goblins are just essentially worthless in most aspects. Mm -hmm. It just, it seems like I'm being proven wrong whenever a goblin does something on this field, but the Skaven are just so weak that this is the only instance in which I could be wrong. Ooh, here we go. The runner will have a space for themselves here. You notice that Skaven had a strength of two in that goblin had a strength of two. Oh, yes. Because they're weak. Now, the question is, is Oni going to go ahead and do anything with this opening here? He could try to move all the way around and go for it, but I'm not sure that's actually the smartest thing to do. Uh, but almost certainly, Ark will take the chance to dodge around everything he can and put a unit on that utter runner. It's also if only can... 45 seconds left. <laughs> on this turn. Ah, that's half a turn. It's plenty of time. It's actually a third of the turn at most. <laughs> Please, give me the exact decimal notation of how much of a percentage of a turn that it is. Well, I would, but it would On just the fly, for each second. Yeah. <laughs> By the time you figure it out, 15 seconds have passed. Well, I was going to say 33% then. Because that's and... going to be close enough to write. And is this going to be a goblin down? No, the goblin gets through and boxes in the Skaven front line. You know, for as many times as both of these teams have ended a match with 4-1... to one, Both down. As many times as these games... You know, it's really weird is that you said that before it happened on my screen, which is really weird to the audience, I should say, because... Your screen is my <laughs> screen being streamed to you. I just oh. I just read the dice. <laughs> uh, stop looking to the future again. I can't stand it for another game. My third eye is open. <laughs> stop cheating, Maximilian Pegasus. You can never stop me, Yugi boy. 
Here we go. Uh, it is currently Ark's turn. Let's see what he's actually but doing. He's dodges. going to try pushing in. Yeah, a bunch of dodgies. But he's sending them down the line. There's now someone adjacent to the ball, and it's going to be harder for Oni to do anything. In fact, there might not even be a turn left to do anything. He might not even be able to run there if there was nothing in the way. I mean, pointedly, if you were really that hard up for scoring, you would have run a full circle and then just hoped that the other team didn't do anything. Now, I don't entirely understand the reasoning behind that kind of move right there, because now it's actually a better defensive position. But also, Oni still has kind of the same problem. He can't get downfield next turn. Um, he has that guy over there. Uh, technically, I guess, if the gear... He could try to throw over the top of the entire enemy team, and then do a run after well, getting past at least two dodges. No, get the, uh, get the gutter runner on the far side. He could possibly make it to the touchdown zone, and then you just move your guy, what, three boxes to the right, and you won't be throwing over anyone's head. You're just having an impossible-to-catch throw. I do get the feeling Oni does not actually care about trying to go for the score. He's instead choosing to get up his beast runner, blitz with him, and then just try to punch out a Skaven before it happens. I mean, Anything one happens. to one is effectively zero zero, and that nobody. I don't know how the game handles a draw, is what I should say. I... Oh, looks like we're back. Oh, dang it. I've been saved from my improvisational nightmare. I was there, and you were there, but you weren't saying anything, you left me hanging. <laughs> yeah, no, you were commenting about the stream seem seemingly went down, and then I started talking, and then realized, wait a second, we're not moving. Oh, <laughs> nope, maybe it's just my computer that went bad. Yep. <clears throat> but it All still right, but seems we... like we're on turn 8 of the same half, so nothing lost. Right, I blinked, and now all the Skaven are on the ground. <laughs> And uh, one of them is now KO'd. Well, technically, you could have blinked for 20 minutes, and it just means that you, uh... <laughs> <see>. <laughs> Word to the wise, I don't blink. Yeah, which is why and you there we uh, go. wear glasses, apparently. Because... <laughs> no, word to the wise, order. blink. It's good for your eyes. The glasses prevent wind from getting into my eyes, you see. Except if it comes <clears> from <throat> every other angle, except for straight forwards. A death and an injury and at least two knockouts. And I don't think anyone got back up there either. Arcloid still has his reserve. Or rather, is probably used it all up at this point. Some of you uh, more astute, sharp-eyed uh, members of the audience might have noticed that uh, the We Stole a Stadium Stadium has the uh, Lessons Team logo on it. <laughs> You look off to the background, it has the Dwarven double uh, hammer thing, which is the symbol for uh, Lessons McGruff's team. I the, guess we know league. who they stole it from. I guess. I mean, after they got knocked out of the bracket, what do they need a stadium for? Alright, so Arcloid to receive the ball, and we'll see if he can actually score with it. Setting up his offense here, double deep, very interesting strategy, and he doesn't have any holes either, so very good. He understands he's going to get brawled, and he's just going to go ahead and set up for a second turn advantage. Here we go, and the ball is out. Quick snap. Uh, Jason Square movement. Oni just moving his rats up a little bit. Moving his goblin to the side since it's not needed over there. Uh, and I think he might still have to dodge. No, nope, apparently nope, not, which fine. means that he could literally just have shifted his entire team one over if he wanted. Apparently, what was he going to do? It's starting to feel that way, actually. Oh, he's completely disengaging, and he's saying, no, rats, you come brawl us. Well, I mean, it ensures that the only attacks that are going to be made are blitzes, and you can only get one blitz a turn, so it cuts down but, on the number of attacks you're going to be threatened but with. But he leaves the assassin. Here we go. He does have the first turn. Everyone is free to do as they want. The assassin's going to try killing a rat, uh, and he just 
He just doesn't manage to stab him. I mean, he's gotten one injury in and one death so far, so I mean, he's making bank on it. He he's definitely has value there. Just well, not this turn. Fairly expensive unit, if I recall right, so... Here we go, as long as there's... Oh, there are four rerolls here on Oni's team in case that went bad, so everything it looks good now. Yeah, new half, new uh, bank of rerolls, <clears> whereas <throat> Arkloid still only has the one. Hopefully, it is not going to be... Hopefully oh, he doesn't use it on a going forward again like he did last time. Hopefully not. However, uh... Though the ball is on his side, and it looks like he's making some room, it's not going to be the easiest push because Ark has put up a very good defense here. And most of his rats will be free to pivot and choose how they block him in. I mean, he's got runners, they've got dodgy. Uh, it's entirely possible that they could run past the only single Skaven that's blocking their path right now. It's theoretically possible, too. Arkloy could just go for it, try to snatch up the ball if he doesn't pick it up this turn. It is a run. Uh, which will be hilarious, but probably ineffective. Uh, I mean, so which... the last thing you want to happen is for this game to end on a note where you were succeeding the entire game, but the other team scored a goal at the very end. And knocks you completely out of the bracket because once again this is the semi-final of the losers bracket whoever loses here is out of the bracket until here the we league go. Uh, starts again not the dentist cage ever but it does cover all of the bases and the only thing not in it is the assassin and the single goblin running across the field so we're going to see how Arcloid pivots on this and what he does to try to block them in another two deep defense in front would probably keep this from going anywhere for at least four turns. Could knock that uh, assassin out pretty hard. If you didn't care about uh, one more goal getting scored against you, the assassin with that injury, high cost player. If he does a physical line, even if a player goes down, he might have trouble trying to slip in. And of course, with two, three gutter runners there, there's plenty of them to try to pick up the slack. So, what are we going to do here? We're gonna Oni, check out looking people, off into the sands. Checking on the people who got knocked out, because apparently we just don't care what our enemy's doing. Could have built up well, a lot technically more. technically he can't interact with it anyway. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Pain, Pain Ripper. Ripper. Apparently their injury was a movement allowance one. So the assassin just couldn't move as far as before. Uh, and what just happened to him there? I kind of missed it. It went by very quickly. He got knocked out. Okay, so he's just out for right now. He wasn't going to participate much more here. There are maybe more rats on the field than the Beastmen have been expecting. Uh, tactically, they're a Chaos team, not a Beastman team. Right. Uh, that is a solid line there. This is going to be very hard to break out of. Uh, again, they are just Skaven. They have low strength and minimal-ish uh, uh, armor value. So I feel like it's going to be pretty easy to break out of. While that may be true, this is still a lot of units and a lot of time just trying to make any amount of space, and even then, he's probably still going to have to make a couple dodges in there. It's overlapping uh, tackle fields is what it is. You notice that like the Chaos Here Warrior, we go. which Double has defense. a higher amount of strength, is being knocked on by at least three Skaven. That is... This could not be more perfect for Arcoloid, this entire formation. Uh, except for that guy dodging into the crowd. <laughs> Lefty uh, Stuzzin is go. a big player. Does he get injured? No. Alright, well, he is out for right now. We got a Skaven right up against the ball thrower. There is the potential for a uh, play in the future here. I wouldn't go for it. In fact, I'd probably just keep that corner, because that corner needs to be sealed. Well, I mean, that assumes that the uh, Chaos Warrior and the Beastman aren't going to do anything on their turn. Harkloid choosing to go ahead and guard the Goblin. Which, alright. Well, he probably feels like with his ball thrower and the other Skaven back there in the middle, he's got as many Todd zones as he was going to have with or without them in the play. Indeed. Fender stumbles into the crowd, one for one right here. Uh, what you want to do is stay so you don't block them. Good. 
Now, theoretically, Oni could try to just do a run. It would be a terrible idea, but it's exactly the kind of risk Ark would take. This is the most fan involvement I think we've seen. In the <clears throat> it it is. So the crowd is... This is this is the community engagement you come to see when it comes to Blood Bowl. You know, this is what you're here for. Well, as much as I try to knock people into the crowd, <laughs> I don't get this lucky. But I feel like these are two teams that try and play on the edges of the field. Right. They are trying to go around each other, and that's pushed them all the way to the edge. Going for a blitz. No, oh, no you already, already did the blitz. blitz. Yeah. yeah, you're just seeing the overlay. No, this is the blitz. No, you're looking at the Beastman attack him now. It's not the Blitz. Oh, okay, okay. Again, you're just looking at the overlay. It's very confusing because the one <laughs> above the Blitz... He was still moving. Yeah, and it got me confused. Well, there we go. That is another rat out of the way. There is still two more rats in the way. Maybe even three. Again, it's very there hard to cage your way through two teams that are so weak. I was clearly a replacement player right there because I do not remember that name ever showing up. Here we go. We just got one character dodge pass here, but it's three different checks and the ball drops. It goes off the field and... And unfortunately it was a dodge <laughs> ability, which means that it was an automatic reroll, which means he doesn't get the chance to reroll himself. The ball almost touched down itself right there, but there's no units for Oni to use. In fact, we were predicting he would be... Uh, Arcloid would be short on units, but instead it is now Oni. Arcloid goes ahead, runs back, gets the ball, and he could throw it back to a gutter runner of his choice and just get out of there. And there's nothing Oni could do about it. That's well, like I said a minute ago, it'd be real unfortunate if you made all these smart plays he and he just forward. did something. <laughs> Why did you even move? You could have just thrown. You can still just throw. It's why there? Well, because that gutter runner is actually free. Look at the guy on the and middle field. And he can pass it along to the Mid next field. person if he wants. Griffin, right there. See that guy right there? Who's literally not touched by anybody? Going forward and a slip. Please but bounce out of the field <laughs> and get thrown back in way down. Okay. And he's stunned. Oh, beautiful. This is what you come here for, the physical comedy. I mean, well, there's that one guy at the 50-yard line who was not in anybody's tackle zone. Who probably Oni has just it. discovered he can't touch the ball, and honestly, this is going to be entirely a game of gutter runners right here. What if oh, Ark Lloyd gets one more touchdown and then spends the rest of the game blocking up Oni's units so he can't score? I will laugh and laugh and laugh, honestly. I mean, there's only Here we go. 14 turns in total left. One more piece of cheese out of the way. Sorry, I meant 10 turns in total left. <laughs> yeah, and there's still that guy at half field who has nobody stopping him. <laughs> oh, he could actually get that goblin out there if he wanted the goblin to have the ball, but... Um... They might not even be able to pick it up. Well, you don't want a goblin to level up either. It'd be a complete waste when you watch him die eventually. Positively, yes. There we go. More rats out of the way. The back of the cage wasn't too great, but those two units up there will be stuck. There we go. Just repositioning... Oh, he's so going to go for it with the Goblin. So that Kibble can try and get the ball. Passing might not be the smartest choice, but he could easily use Runty to just walk away and hand the ball off next turn. And that would probably be the best play. Because this way, a player that actually can use the experience will get it. And just rat after rat falling over. They're so clumsy. And there goes that guy. No, okay. Didn't see the dodge. He, he was there. thinking about it, and he just decides not to. All right, Ark, your turn. What are you going to do? See, you got me. options, you got dodges. This is me. I would just pick up my guys and then take that guy from the ha uh, 50 yard line, 
and blitz the the uh, goblin. That would be the most sensible thing to do, but we're dealing with Arcloid. And he's choosing to do a dodge and a go for it first, just to get the assistance bonus before fighting a goblin. Yeah, so we need the assistance bonus on a goblin. To be fair, two strength versus two strength. Or I guess this is three, actually. It's three on two, but I mean, clearly it didn't work out for him, because... I mean, the goblin still has to cross field, or try and pass, or hand off. Right, he can always use Stunty to escape, and he can always do a back step in order to only do one dodge roll. So he can still do this. Oni still has a chance. Uh, but it's entirely dependent on that dodge. Oni has four rerolls still to do this. I think he's got it in the bag there. Both down. No and block. An there we go. Goblin down, everybody. <laughs> an injury and a stun. Uh, no long-term effect. Would have been great if he was a uh, movement effect. No Monterey Jack left on the field. It's now going to be turnover. Oni's turn. He's got the goblin. He's got the ball. There's only one thing you need to do here. I guess and go in and blitz with a beast man. Blitzing with the beast man is also technically an option. That does make it even easier. Now there's not even a dodge roll involved. Here we go. I think Oni has it. All he has to do is walk the ball over, hand it off, and score. Unless he chooses to score with the goblin, in which case we will make fun of him. Well, yeah, yeah I'd say he's crossing the entire field, but a handoff is more likely. There we go. That's a green handoff. Should be perfectly fine. Nice and easy. He's got the ball. Oni can now do whatever he wants, and he's... Uh, um, hmm. Apparently forgot how to select his unit. Oh, right. No, I'm sorry. I'm stupid. Everything's gone very mixed up, and I forgot which side of the field Oni owns. That's why I said <laughs> he I has to cross he the could... whole field. There we go. Okay. Yeah, remember the ball bounced off to that touchdown zone? The warper picked it up, shot it downfield again. Yep. All the rats are tied up. There's not very much to do here. Maybe the stun the uh stunned gutter runner can get back up, go for it, and blitz the other gutter runner and make this just a hilarious back and forth game. Uh but that is asking for a lot. I'm gonna go on the But it's also talk to, the, uh, talk to the chefs, I'll be right back. <clears throat> Alright, there you go. Uh Sonic, I'm loving it. So, let's see what's happening here. We've got a little bit of bullying going down on the field. Uh, that doesn't really help you out very much, Ark, but the brawl continues on as it has. You could maybe dodge that guy out. Yeah, I see what you're thinking, but you can't get him there. A, a bold move, but a pointless one, isn't it? Ah, well, let's see what else he thinks. Oh, he still has this one right over here, perfectly free. Two going for it. You could tie up the ball. You could force a dodge or force a blitz. But will that restrict your other one from trying? Will you even try with them? We'll have to see. Oh, gets up and blitzes. Chaos Warrior down, but ah, there's only one unit to care about on this field. That's the Gunner Runner with the ball. And we're going to see what Oni decides to do. He's most likely going to blitz. He's got one right there with the Chaos Warrior. Or, no, that's the Beast Man. I think. Ah, my resolution. It's terrible right now. But he pushes away, and he has a clear field, and he's just going for the touchdown. And there we have it. Nearly ran the entire field with that ball, but Oni goes ahead and gets that touchdown. Third of the game, Oni in the lead. 
and we'll see if Arcloid can pull it out with a draw. There may not be very many turns left. Dead and injured. Lots of knockouts still on Oni's team. <sighs> and I believe that is one person standing up on Arcloid's team. So Arcloid still has the number advantage, which helped him out a lot last game. But right now, we'll have to just see how it goes. Oni deciding on format. Very low on units, as is his uh as usually happens with him here. Got he's actually pulling inward. We'll see if this pays off. Arcloid, you have lots of choices here. You could probably go for a reverse beatdown if you played very strategically. And maybe try to open it up, but there is three, four more turns left in the game. You just need that touchdown, which we know you can do. There we go. What kind of tests are you setting up? You're setting up a nice and wide one. You have all of your options open. Oni choosing where to kick, and he just kicks anywhere in the middle of the field. It's another blitz. Uh, everyone gets to move one space, I believe. Nope. Gets to do whole action. Free turn. Charges in. And disrupts the formation. Yeah, keeping that goblin still is probably for the best. Ties up another unit. And a trip. Unfortunate, and I believe it goes straight into Ark's turn. Ooh, this is an injury. I can't read what it says there, but something just happened. Welcome back, Theta. Uh, you just got injured there. Did you happen to catch what happened to them? No. I was, in fact, looking up at the score, trying to tell... The, I guess the expected happened, that Oni ran it downfield. Oni ran all the way across the field and got the touchdown. There's quite a lot of bench on Oni's team right now. Arcloid has the ball, and there's a lot of open space. Arcloid can play this safe, keep a hold of his ball, and just set up some gunner runners for next turn and get a touchdown. And there's very little that can be done, I think. God. I've said that a whole lot, and then stuff happened. I really uh, hope we don't end with a tied game, because we have not yet figured out what we do with a tied game in a bracket. We just had a failed blitz against a goblin who had disadvantage, I believe. Uh, no, there were, I didn't see any red dice, so it wasn't disadvantage. And there you go, a magnificent flip right there, and another rat down. And he's just going to go straight for the ball, and he for gets tripped. For no reason, I assume. Either he was confident in his team's rerolls, or he didn't see the Skaven there. He's got so many rerolls, he can afford to be risky here. That's for... Uh, and then just a slip as he goes for it. He's just inviting All right. Arcloid. Again, Arcloid, just pass to the Skaven on the far left, who has nobody in a... What are you doing?! He just wants to line up a straight shot, apparently. Well, I said the far left. He's uh, going for the far right. I guess it is still technically his far left. I He's guess... listening. He's watching the stream. Get him. <laughs> I think he is actually watching the stream. We have... Oh, he could actually score this round? No, okay. Maybe not. And another slip. Welcome to Blood Bowl, physical comedy game of the year, everybody. Yeah, with no... But he's not stunned, and I don't... Oh, he, maybe he can. They have a lot of he movement could. allowance. Yeah. Oni already thinking about it. It's Skaven versus Skaven. And he's not he even literally... pushing it. Oh, but he. But 83% chance with a reroll. Plenty of rerolls. This is the time to use them on a good throw like that. Choosing not to go for it and put some space between him and the down player. I mean, it's entirely possible he could blitz, knock him over, grab the ball, and move. He has still a minuscule chance that Arcloid could score here in the last two turns he has left. 
Not much that character can do going all the way downfield. But he can maybe try to prevent other characters from getting there easily. Goblin 2 going to set up the barricade. Again, it's all up to this uh, down Skaven here to get up Blitz and run it if he can. Yeah, I'm, I'm at the edge of my seat. This could tie it up on literally the last couple of turns. I mean, if you're Arcloid right now, ignore the rest of your team. <laughs> They're not going to make it there. He's choosing to realign anyway, just to maybe deny Oni a goal, which, fair enough, honestly. Yeah, but he's got the movement allowance to uh, diagonal his way across the field. No reason to move them all in like this. The only move that matters right now is getting the ball. To the previous math I said before, 2-1 is just as oh, good no. as 1-0. Ugh, I was thinking he was about to blitz there. No, he's just trying to really keep that cow uh, penned in there. I mean, the Chaos Warrior? It, I keep thinking it's the Beastman. It has, like, the big flowing brown hair. Here's the blitz, and he does it. But, but does will he, he the get, ball? Will he get the ball? That's the big question here. Or will the ball even land next to him? He goes off the field... All the way downtown, into the end zone, back up the field. Right and next to him. <laughs> Pick it up and then score. Yeah, like I said. There we go. Tied up on the last turn. Arcloid, you've done it. You've made this incredibly complicated for us. That could Let's have gone a lot worse. I mean, given how many places that ball bounced in and out of field. Oh, yes. Although, granted, he had the movement allowance. He probably could have picked it up anywhere. Now all he has to do is stop Oni from scoring once more. Within a singular turn. Which is not impossible in a game of Flood Bowl. That is true. We've, we've sort of seen it already. He has to set up ahead of time for it. He has to move those gutter runners up. Well, who knows sure what happens during to. a kickoff. He could get an extra turn to move anybody that's on the front line. Use the extra movement to get a gutter runner halfway across the field. Then make a pass. It's not impossible. It's just highly unlikely. It looks like we're going to have to figure out what happens on a tide game. He's just going for a normal straight up line and some back defenders to catch it. Ball goes out. High kick, so he will grab it. Oh, and it's pretty far forward, too. Look at that. Uh, and it, it fumbles out of his hand. Go for one last stab. You'll need to take out at least two rats adjacent to each other in order to get a clearing right here. Uh, I think he's probably, probably going to use his last turn to cause as much injury and fouling as possible. That would probably be the smart thing to do. You got nothing left to use those uh, rerolls on at this point. See in the background the uh, McGruff symbols on this arena. Just remember the sponsor of our game, everybody. Parties. <laughs> Ooh, passing it off and a. Up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, and the assassin has it, and it can't go anywhere. Because you used your only action to try to assassinate. Oh, please, blitz for the disadvantage draw. <laughs> oh, now that would be a comedy moment right there. Here we go. There's plenty of space right there, but Ark will have a chance to respond, and Oni will not be able to do very much of anything to get the ball there. There's no more turns, unless there's overtime. Yeah, I don't know that there is overtime. I think a tied game is still a tied game. Rushing it for the brutality. That's what you use it for. And Lefty's cousin is sent off. He got caught. Yeah, which also causes a turnover. Ref's not having any of it. The last 
turn of the game. Now, there's no way they can manage this one. Apparently not. Can move it up into some more Skaven, maybe. Well, he's only yeah, there's only one more Skaven that can attack the ball carrier. Not that it matters, because you can't move it anywhere down the field other than injuring somebody. You can maybe do a short-term pass for, for some experience. Pain Ripper out for the second time. And there we go. Well, at least there's more Skaven to deal with. Yeah, but that's a higher strength player than uh, the Skaven team. And there's only one who could attack her right now. Why did you? <laughs> oh, right, right, because opposite view. Because right. it's over anyway. No, no, I was just thinking, why would you click that one? And it's like, oh, right, that was his view. Oh, uh, here we go. It is a draw. And there we have it. Tons of money. Armor breaks. All uh, right, so let's... Uh... Go ahead and mute ourselves over here, or deafen ourselves and mute ourselves over here, and join them in that call. All right. Hey, hey. Heck of a game. I wish you guys didn't tie, but that's where we are. <laughs> Hello, Blood Bowl participants. That was an amazingly <laughs> hilarious match right there. So many turnovers. Great time. Uh, I don't think I've laughed this much at a game in a long time. Really. So I guess let's go to... ahead and yeah, let's go ahead and start with Arcloid. Arcloid, what do you got to say about the match here today? Well, obviously, it was an almost an even match. Although I do believe that uh, Warlock here is you know the better player, so I do feel good that I've tied against him. Yeah, you uh, made we'll a lot of dangerous. Them. Yeah, you made a lot of dangerous choices there, but apparently some of them paid off, so good job. Uh, so what I do you got to, to say, uh, Oni? Real quick, before we get into that, uh, what Oni has to say. Sorry, not to interrupt you, Oni. What was your no uh, fan factor at the end there, Oni? Uh, four, I think? Arkloid, what was your fan factor at the end? Oh, shoot. I uh, don't... Let me see what... My fan I... factor is now at three. All right, I think that's what we're going to use to determine the uh, winner of a tie, is fan factor. I do have a proposition as well, uh, if you want to hear it in a second, but I want to hear from Oni first. Uh, just about the game? It was a real yeah, fun game. Yeah, about the game. What do you think? It's fun. It's fun playing against someone who takes as many stupid risks as I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw you really going for the cage strategy. It worked out really well for you most of the time, but uh, I believe it was on the... Uh, second half where you had an entire corner you were up against. That just looked uh, very difficult to deal with. How do you feel just being penned in like that? I had good faith in those Chaos Warriors to break through. It's just ran out of people again. <laughs> Half your team was on the bench. <laughs> well, they woke All up right. for, the, for the last turn. All right. So Fan Factor is a thing. But I was thinking of a proposition as well, and that would be you two could take a bet on which of us is going to win, and you get to fight whichever person you bet against. I think that has too much writing <laughs> on it. Mm. There's <laughs> too much writing on it. Maybe mm. I'm just being too complicated. Yeah. So if you guys want to go for fan factor, we could do that too here. Probably the fairest way to go. We've already rolled a d6 and seen who got higher. Uh, it's up to Arkloid what they think, because obviously I, I would go to favor myself. Okay. All right. In that case, Oni, congratulations. Factor. You are the winner. Sounds by, good. By default. <laughs> yes, which Fair. means that so, you will now go up against the winner of Griffin and I's match next week, I believe. Yep. Yep. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to think of words. My brain's just slowly sputtering out. Well, I think that was a fun game. Thank you guys for playing for us. We look forward to seeing more of you, seeing you on the commentary bench too. And we'll catch everyone watching next time. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Woot woot. Yeah.